Welcome to our Two Posh Podcast. I'm Gabrielle and I'm here with my co-hosts, my daughter Marcella. Hello. And our Bernie. Wow, that was <laughs> I was expecting something more than a Bernie, the Puerto Rican this or I that. Do, it's I like just our Bernie. Uh, Bernie. What's up guys? How's it going? <laughs> And our DJ Spider, who she handles see everything. Race. <laughs> <laughs> and we today, uh, we welcome an amazing special guest for us. And we are so honored to welcome Ms. Sue Longcar. Um, we, I reached out to Sue because it is uh, Suicide Prevention Month, September. And Sue had a tra- tragedy uh, three and a half years ago. Yes. What? Yeah, uh, before and... In- November. For in November, her daughter Grace committed suicide and she was 16 years old. Mm-hmm. And I, we have so many mutual friends. I don't know how we've never met. And I was so taken aback and touched by your story when it happened. And I'm sure many were. And I have a 16 year old daughter right now. And I relate, I have two friends who lost children, their youngest children. And I was right there. So I, I say it all the time. When I interview moms that have lost children, I'm the most nervous. I'm never nervous, but I'm <laughs> nervous because I feel like I feel like I feel your pain. I can't even imagine. So you posted a photo and you post a lot about it because you're very outspoken and you want to help people. And that has touched me a lot. And I thought, what a great way. I know you have spoken out before. You have been on TV. You have had these you know, condensed little shows that we see. And I thought I wanted to give you a chance to give grace and honor her life because a mom who loses a child, I think the biggest fear is that they're forgotten right, or that their life didn't matter. So I wanted to give you a chance to take this first hour and just talk about grace, give her, talk about her, how she was when you got pregnant. Like, what was your family like? Tell us all about her. So real quick, just to to set it all up, right? So your ex-husband is Brian Longcar. And so for those of you, just so it gives it the the respect of understanding the background on everything going on, Brian Longcar was the lawyer that we'd see on TV all the time. Actually, he wasn't my ex. He's my deceased husband. Correct. 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 So um, deceased husband. And for those who had ever seen the, it, he was on everything. It was I mean, the strong arm, right? Yeah, Texas strong arm. Um, you got saw his radio ads, saw his TV commercials, saw billboards. You saw, you know, on, on buses. And so, just to give you guys a little background, kind of what it started off with and how, and then now we're here, and we wanted to make sure and give enough respect so everyone can understand everything going on in the background. So, go ahead. <laughs> yes, please. Well, um, she, w- we really tried hard for her. <laughs> oh, um, <did> <laughs> Brian would laugh. Brian had low sperm. <laughs> 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 he used to walk into a party and go, I have low sperm. And then he would say it? <laughs> because I would, because I would, he would just say to beat me to the punch. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> so, <laughs> she's going to tell everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Um, we were, we had to do insemination to get, to get, to get pregnant. So tell me before that, like when you, were, when you married, um, yeah, Brian, I had three children and you he had, had one and so we had, and then we so had, that was four. Uh, that was four. How'd you guys and meet? We met, I went into his office. Uh-uh. No <laughs> way. I did not know him at, at all. I mean, I'd never, I just moved here from Amarillo, Texas. So I d- didn't, I'd never seen a commercial or a, uh, he could have been 75. I had no, no idea, idea who he was. Mm-hmm. And I was getting divorced from the lawyer. It takes a special kind of stupid to marry <laughs> back to back. <laughs> but oh I God, was getting perfect. divorced and he was getting divorced as it turns out. So he had set me up to, he called, returned my call and he was a lot like me and this boundaryless share everything and we talked for two hours on the phone when he just called Mm -hmm. and told me i needed to go to this thing called pathways which at the time phil mcgraw led and i had actually been years before no what is pathways it was this 
like est you know those seminars where you like called you oh, and things yeah. like that where mm-hmm. you go and you go for a weekend then you go for five days oh. and then you go for another weekend and I, then you go for another weekend yes i've been to that before okay yeah i totally know that's awesome yeah it's pretty awesome so phil used to lead it before he became the big time guy that he is now wow and okay. i went when phil was still leading it okay and um so, so it, he was it, yeah. telling me that i needed that's crazy to go cool. It's just a way to like better yourself. You deal with your inner self, and like oh. yeah, it was. Cool. It's very emotional when yeah, you're going yeah. there, right? Because you do yes, a lot you, of courage behind it. It's pretty all cool. The stuff and they confront you. Yes. the group does on all kinds of stuff. Yeah, you get kicked out of the. I got, I got kicked out of the group <laughs> several times. You have to earn your name tag. Yeah, and, you know it sounds kind of. If y'all have never done it before, it sounds kind of crazy, but it's really, it really gets to the heart and the core of issues that you're dealing with, and it really does bring you out. If you go through the whole course oh on the better side, it's super cool, yeah. super powerful. Yeah. So Brian told you to do that. Yes. Okay. And I was like, I've already been. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do it again. But, but we are, immediately had that in common. He yeah. had just finished going. Got it. So he was kind of on a brawl high about the whole thing and mm-hmm. so he was telling me that about that so that was something we had that kind of immediately kind of connected mm-hmm. us that we had both done this thing and that we were both getting divorced and how plus, old are you a kids at this point i see my youngest was i think patrick was like four a little and then yeah and then sally was like in first grade and then david would have probably been in like fourth grade and his little girl was just like one Oh, wow. So, so you had little ones yeah, to combine. Yeah, little ones. Okay. So, but when I came to his office, um, I think he was in a meeting, and he had me set up with somebody else to meet. And he immediately canceled the meeting he was in. And the he funny thing you. is, the guy that <laughs> um, gave me the directions, because I got lost, still get lost. I told you, I get yeah. lost everywhere I go. So I was, he was giving me directions, and he said, now, I'm going to tell you, he's going to hit on you. but And it's okay if you go out with him. He's really fun. But just whatever you do, don't marry. Don't marry. Oh. <laughs> and I go, don't Stop. worry. I'm what not going to marry. I'm not even, like of yeah. all the warnings in the world. Yeah. God. I was like, I'm not going to marry. I'm not even not married right now. So <laughs> I'm not going to marry him. You know, I don't, I don't even know who he is. Right. I don't even know what he looks like. So now how backtrack into this time how big is he is he as popular as he i mean he he got he was pretty he was pretty popular um but he ended up being a lot bigger because he had Uh, that office which was big but he ended up with nine statewide offices during our marriage wow Wow. Wow. so he got a lot bigger yeah Mm -hmm. in the time that we were married but he was Bigger than I, I, I really just didn't know who he was. But then I hadn't been in Dallas very long, right? So you, so, so he hits on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it was like on. It was on from that day. From that day. Yeah, yeah it was. That was kind of it. Like, we tell like, me how much, long. He was That's like so bringing funny. donuts in the morning for the kids and taking them to school. Uh, what? It was just right, right. away. Wow. It just yeah. like on. So did. How, how fast did you get engaged and married? Six weeks. Oh, oh my God. Hey, way to listen to uh, <laughs> Way to listen to my advice. Oh, yeah. Great. It was six weeks long. Oh, that is It was this awesome. huge diamond, though, and I said, it was like seven carats. Stop. I said, who would turn down the yeah. diamond? Yeah. Okay. Right. I've, I've always showed people that diamond, and they, I said, who would say no just for the diamond? Hell, I'll say yes. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody with seven carats, I'll do it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and we both wanted a bunch of kids. How did he propose? I, I I can't even remember. I just know he was he was larger than the largest life person I've ever <laughs> known in my life right. for sure. And we did a lot of crazy things together and he was sober. He was a recovering alcoholic and so I found him endlessly entertaining because most people that act like that are usually drunks. <laughs> <laughs> so so the fact like that he drink. was sober and yeah. was so much fun. Yeah. And Yet still wanted. He was really interested. That was what really moved me. As I remember on our first date, my kids were all asleep by the TV. And he got up and picked them all up and took them to their bed. Each one to their individual bed. And that was what... You were impressed like, wow, me the so most sweet. because I was a package deal. Yeah, and a lot of people didn't want the package. Right. The minute I told them I had three kids, I would see their dust. <laughs> you know, it was like they're like, oh, oh we, I, I'll never forget. One guy was like, "Do you want to go to Houston with me?" And I was like, 
oh, that'd be great because then I could bring Patrick to my mom's house. And they were like, Patrick? You know, um, that was my youngest son. <laughs> they were like, that that was it didn't cut into the picture. You right. know, that happened to me a lot. <laughs> right. So he thought it would when I told him I had three kids, he thought that was just right. awesome. Oh. You know. Oh, wow. And it, the like the more the merrier. Okay. And that wow. it was That's like awesome. a bonus deal. Yeah. And I that wasn't always the experience. Right. So and I was a totally packaged deal. You know, my kids were my in my life so right. so you and the three kids and then the seven carat diamond <laughs> yeah <laughs> six weeks yeah how, how fast so you, that's how you God, got engaged so crazy. six weeks yeah. and then, when did you nuts. get married then well which time we got married three times what so the, let's go with the Ooh. number one because, uh, <laughs> yeah. so six weeks you get engaged yeah how far after that soon after that did you get married the first time to him the first time let's see was just a few a few weeks later, we were in Santa Fe. Holy shit. That's like not listening to any of your friends advice. Like, hey, no. just don't marry the guy. Yeah. So no. Ten and he weeks told me, he goes, let's go to Vegas and get married. We don't have to tell anybody. It's on the way home. Oh. And that's there we are with my sense of direction again. <laughs> I, I thought, <laughs> okay. Us. So that sounded fun. So we literally flew from got wedding rings and I have pictures, and I'll hang show them to you on my phone because they're pretty hilarious. <laughs> oh, like you. Garth Brooks and Faith Hill or something. <laughs> we flew all the way, and we got married. He was obsessed with Elvis, and we got married oh, by an yeah. Elvis impersonator. Uh, 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 what did you wear? And I want to it, know it what you wore. It was just kind of a, I, I don't know, I had a like a big, like, black straw hat on with little conch shells oh, on it no. and okay. old, an old choker and you know it was the 80s it was just kind of an 80s yeah. looking oh, outfit oh gotta see this picture in a little bit yeah. you gotta, yeah. I, I wanna see this on a vest yeah. and, but it was actually my favorite wedding because we like set our own vows oh and it was so moving and we didn't mean for it to mean Anything other than to the two of us. Yeah. Like he went back to his house. I went back to mine what? with the, what? my children. <laughs> you know, we wouldn't mean to to count. Well, it ended up counting and making national news uh-uh. and oh. causing a huge problem in both of our divorces. Oh. So wait, you guys are still married? Yeah. Oh. And didn't know it was a felony either. What? You, oh, because that was just his job to know it was a yeah. felony. Oh, yeah. I didn't know. So you guys both. Uh, okay. Sorry. Let me pull. Let me work through this real quick. So <laughs> Bernie's like, Wait, you're married. Yeah. You're going through your divorce. Yeah. And right? they both knew we were getting yeah. married. I yeah. mean, to, uh, <laughs> settlements were on the paper. Yeah. On the like, it was just lawyers kind of, just ready yeah. to be signed. Oh, you guys just hadn't signed it yet. Right. So y'all both say, eh, fuck it, let's do this. Yeah. And you go to Vegas. Yeah. And you get married. So you guys have to get a license though, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Shouldn't have done that either. <laughs> <laughs> Should have skipped that step. <laughs> this is so That's funny. crazy. All right. So. Now you go back home. Yo, continue. To your own houses. Yeah. We go back home to our own houses because he didn't stay at my house when my kids were there. So he would just mm-hmm. come over in the morning. Do they and bring, love, your kids love him? They, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah love they him. loved him. They were crazy about him because he was so much. He's such a he's such a kid himself, and so yeah, they thought he was great. Okay, That's so crazy, awesome. But um, but, that but once one. it made national news, so what happened with that? We had to kind of get out of town for oh. a while. <laughs> oh my god! Because uh, how soon after you guys got home did it start? Did it leak out? I, not too long, like maybe a week. Because he was, I, he went to an audition with me. I was an actress and I had an audition and he was with me. And after the audition, he goes, I, I, I need to tell you something. <laughs> We're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, something's going to hit the paper tomorrow. <gasps> and I, then I just started bawling because I really didn't want to humiliate my, I really didn't. And I knew he was going to be so upset that my ex-husband to be was because he was a really private guy oh, and no. a real prim and proper person and i knew he, oh, he was gonna be just crushed and did I, he knew you guys were dating though oh yeah he didn't yeah care? yeah well he wasn't no i mean that's all real no one's excited <laughs> yeah it. yeah, yeah he I mean, wasn't but, just but he, it, it wasn't like tumultuous <laughs> between you guys he knew you moved on you were dating right else. right but this was gonna throw a wrench in that right for sure. but to okay. have it make 
front national page news. news. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it wasn't going to just thrill him. Was he in Amarillo? Yeah. Was he? He was here in Dallas. Oh, shit. Oh, no. so, yeah. re- okay. All right. Continue. Yeah. So I had to go do some like begging. Of course, they asked him if he wanted to prosecute mm-hmm. me, and he said no. He didn't uh, want to prosecute the mother of his thank children. God. Well, thank God, yeah. But, so what were you looking at? Let's say he would have been, he would have said, you know what? Hell yeah, I want to prosecute. What would what would have been worst case scenario? Well, if we'd been found guilty, which we weren't, because Brian went and did a lot of fast work, which yeah. he always does. <laughs> and he got, he went and flew on the next plane to Vegas and, and got an, it. Got an old. Got oh, an old. Perfect. Oh, God. <laughs> and got it somehow dismissed yeah and now you know what now it's not a felony anymore what now it, it's just know. kind of an oops so <laughs> but then it, now it's a misdemeanor it's oh, wow. been demoted to so, so it would it have been worst case scenario <laughs> potential jail time it, potential no shit. and well the, the really the worst thing that would have happened is that brian would have lost his law license Ooh. oh oh my god oh my god so you're you're screwed being married you're screwed being married the second time you're screwed not being divorced i'm like God, mar- yeah that's what a shit show marriage is marcella just seeing so you know, all together <laughs> yeah <laughs> just kidding. yeah I'm yeah kidding. and then this I'm was kidding. this big idea that's i mean hilarious. and my brother was flying on an airplane at the time and he said <laughs> so somebody crazy. next to him goes how about this this dallas lawyer gets married and my brother goes Oh my God, that's my sister. <laughs> oh my God, that's crazy. Wow. wow. That's, yeah. So I go ahead. So, so that's, I mean, fast so that was kind of, yeah. that was kind of the start of things. So there was the, but we wanted a, a really big family. So mm-hmm. we always were going to have two or three of our own together. Okay. So that's your first marriage. So, so we, um, that was the first one. <laughs> then the second one we had on our, at our house on New Year's Day, a really big one. That same year? Yeah. No, not this. Well, yes, I guess it would have been the same year. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. not technically because New Year's turns into a new year. But like the, once you did the Vegas wedding to that, how, right. how, how far away was that? Like. I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure what the exact date that Vegas but wedding like, seems like it was like in the spring or okay, something so like, like that. And then, and then that, yeah. yeah, like so you did the wedding day. and then did, did you invite people to that one? Yeah, no, lots this of people. Was a really yeah, big wedding. wedding. Yeah, yeah it was so you guys like, are officially divorced. Y'all yeah, can un- <laughs> okay. undo it like felons. Get yeah, married. <laughs> get married and then that wedding. Then I, I think it was my. I don't know which birthday it was. If it was my 35th birthday or but. We renewed our vows at the Highland Park Chapel um, with the minister there and had all of our real close friends and family to lunch, City Cafe to go, mm-hmm. had a room upstairs, and we had a big lunch up there. So we, oh, renewal. So we awesome. married each other that Again. third time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How soon did you guys do the renewal after the actual second real first one? Um, I think it would have been like seven years right. or something That's like awesome. that. So tell me, children, now you wanted more kids. Mm-hmm. And when did you have your fifth? So, well, that we, was we, five, that right? was, yeah, we had Abby. We went to this, once we determined about the low sperm, <laughs> <laughs> we were going to this um, genetics and IVF in Virginia, this clinic. Mm-hmm. And we were trying to get a girl, too. And they okay. were the... Wow. We're on the cutting edge of determining sex. Yeah, they would they, implant yeah. what was a girl or a boy. Okay. So we were going there, but it wasn't working. It, we did, I don't know how many, we even did one cycle of IVF and it didn't work. Okay. So, so we came home and then got pregnant. Oh, oh my God. Way. Yeah. Really? I've heard this before. Yeah. This is, yeah so I've heard that how, before. I mean, because it's not cheap. I no, like so. No, how, yeah, it was like, like I said, it was like twenty five grand. Yeah. yeah, just flush down the toilet. <sighs> yeah, and yeah, because if it call doesn't up work, and say, yeah. "Am I pregnant?" No, you're no. not. Sorry. Wow. Wow. Hope that's you like crazy. that twenty five grand? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh. So, so that's what Abby did. You say yes. Okay, Abby, and and she's she'll be twenty four next month. Okay. So yeah, she was the first one together. Right. Okay. And then I wanted. To ha- her to have a sibling, mm-hmm. and so it was. I was like on a mission, <laughs> and um, we found a doctor here that um, 
my doctor in Amarillo that had delivered my children that my earlier mm-hmm. children yeah. said he's the best. And, um, but they said with grace that there had been, there was no ch- chance. There's a certain no number way. that you have to have to where there's any likelihood of, of a sperm count. I used to know all those numbers. Yeah. I had it. It was like my obsession for a while. Right. And, they were we were so far below the number because they would know how much they inseminated at the time. They would uh, say, "This is the number in, in the sample and what how, we how have." How soon today. were you guys trying after? We waited a couple years, okay, because they they were like three years apart, mm-hmm. and um, we lost one in between. We had a miscarriage mm-hmm. in between, mm-hmm. and then um, Abby, and then with Grace, we went to. Um, I had gone to a prayer retreat. It was called Walk to Emmaus. It's a non-denominational, just woman's prayer retreat. It's mm-hmm. been around forever. It's started by a Catholic priest and a Methodist minister, and it's just non-denominational. And I had gone to it for a weekend, and they had little prayer baskets out, and they have people that pray for you around the clock. And I kept putting it in the little prayer basket that would I, I want that baby. I would get. I want it. Yeah, I want mm-hmm. a baby, and. Literally, that was the, and and also the whole focus of that retreat was grace. That was the what? the oh, thing wow. was the different. I didn't know there were so many different kinds of grace. That there was provenient grace, and there were they and they had of these speakers on it. And I left a lot more educated than I, and I got to be really good friends with this black minister, and we started going to an all black church. And we went down to St. Paul's Methodist Church that's downtown. Mm-hmm. And we went there for several years. You did? Yeah. <laughs> just so, just we were the only black. white people in great church. Great energy. But, yeah, the best yeah. energy. It, oh, it was all. awesome. Yeah. The music was yes, so good. It was best. And his sermons were mm-hmm. just amazing. The only thing my kids would complain about, they go, Mom, is two hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, long. Right. this is just a, way too long to go. But we went for... And but I found out I had gone and after they'd already told me this cycle's a wash, the numbers are so low, there's no, no way. way. But I they beeped me. I, this was before I think cell phone because I, I think I got oh, a, a little beep mm-hmm. and beeped I'd me. gone I outside. Heard that in a while. Yeah. And they said that I was pregnant during <gasps> the service. No what? way. And it was Grace, as it turned out. And wow. I even said if it's a girl, I'm going to name her Grace because wow. I had everybody pray for her you and know, then during that retreat. Retreat, yeah. And I was such good friends with that woman minister. I had bonded with her so much during that retreat. And she had really helped me with several spiritual issues that I had a hard time overcoming. Mm-hmm. That she had really helped me see in a different light and just been enormously helpful to me. And um, so I said, I'm going to name her Grace. And it's, you know, it's interesting too, just now occurred to me that I remember when I told her, she said she knew. And she kind of had like a sick sense about Mm -hmm. her. And she said, This little girl has a purpose. Oh, wow. And she said, It's a girl. And she said, She has a purpose. 